，怎么这车皮毛绿？这个不是那么玩意儿，我就看二维码扫描，你把手拿走。看出来这是，看完了，完了。你，你我怀疑你是哪个？什么玩意儿？哦，哇哦 ，that zero sickness policy that Bill Gates complimented, cheered on in China is、uh, really working well there. Yeah, welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Ukradowski here of WeAreChange.org, and there's a lot of crazy news to get into, especially after last night's Grammys. This, as there's some very eye-opening articles from the Associated Press and Pentagon sources once again contradicting the White House with what looks like efforts to try to de-escalate this larger conflict that's happening in Ukraine. And oh yeah. Elon freaking Musk just bought a huge portion of Twitter, becoming its largest shareholder, according to a lot of people. This is only the beginning. We're going to be talking about that plus a lot more, and we're just going to jump right into it because there's so much news to talk about, especially in Shanghai, where 26 million people are under lockdown right now. A lot of buildings are being barricaded by the government. A lot of people are being relocated, separated from their children. And if you think this utter lunacy, this draconian Dangerous centralization of power can't happen here in the United States. Well, don't kid yourself; it can, especially with mayors like Eric Adams of New York City, who once again attended another glamorous Broadway event while, of course, just implementing and extending mask mandates for children under the age of five because of a quote slight uptake in cases. Yes, Eric Adams, the mayor of New York City. Is forcing children under the age of five, based off no scientific data at all, based off no actual evidence at all, was met with protesters after this latest decree, which he just simply laughed off. In related absolute waste of government spending your money, we're also finding out today that the Secret Service is renting out a thirty thousand a month Malibu mansion in order to quote protect. Hunter Biden, yes, Hunter Biden is set up in a six-bed, six-bath Spanish-style estate in Malibu with a gorgeous ocean view that's reportedly next to Hunter Biden's own twenty thousand dollar per month Malibu mansion. And of course, this man gets to live a life of luxury paid for by your tax dollars. And of course, not only getting the protection of the Secret Service, but of course, the corporate mainstream media of the United States that for a very long Long time covered up his horrible behavior and clear corruption when it came to business dealings with China and Ukraine. Now, in other totally unrelated business news, today we also found out that Elon Musk just became Twitter's biggest shareholder after buying 9.2 percent of stake in that company on March 14th. An investment that has allowed his shares to rise 26 percent. After, of course, the news of this coming out has elevated the stock tremendously. It is continuing to grow, with, of course, the possibility of it possibly becoming a free speech platform, which, of course, Elon Musk has previously advocated for. Elon Musk has stated that free speech is essential to quote a functioning democracy. Many people responded to his poll that Twitter is not adhering to this principle, which Elon warned, as we talked about, that the consequence of this po poll will be important. And today, Elon Musk just tweeted, "Oh hi, lol," with a resounding response from the general public, with a lot of people already asking to reinstate their favorite banned accounts, whether it's the Babylon B, the former president of the United States, and with Jack Dorsey even significantly yesterday regretting publicly his moves at what he described as destroying the internet. We have to understand that that this opens up a potential new window that could, of course, greatly benefit society and civilization at. Large, as of course, free speech is essential to a free society, and usually is correlated with free markets and a lot of financial success. And according to Yahoo Finance, this is quote just the appetizer, as they believe that Elon Musk will become an active stake over the coming weeks or months. Is just the start of what they're describing—a quote broader strategic focus on Twitter, which allegedly will focus on quote changing the slate, changing the management team, or quote ultimately 
a buyout. Now, is this going to be a red herring? Is this going to be a significant step towards freeing humanity? Well, of course, only time will tell. But for now, I'm really happy I have LukeUncensored.com as, of course, there's been a lot of major censorship efforts against comedy, against satire, against independent news, against just reporting the actual facts with evidence of what's happening in this world. And this is why I'm able to say and do whatever I want that I can't do on this platform. Today, I got some crazy news of some insider information of what's happening inside of China that I'm going to be talking about in today's uncensored video. A lot of crazy stuff happening there, and it's definitely worth mentioning, especially with a bigger picture of the global economic security, which of course is in question here. Lots of important issues to get into, to talk about, and you will be able to see that later on today on LukeUncensored.com. Three master classes of exclusive merchandise, private events, meetups, all available only for members on LukeUncensored.com. Hope to see you there later on after this video. Click the link down in the description to find out more. Now, very interestingly, a couple hours ago during the Grammys, a music video awards show, they introduced the president of Ukraine, Vladimir Zeminsky, who gave a short speech and then uh, very bewilderingly introduced John Legend. Now, I think it's fair to say that this is not uh, usual during a, a time of, of war, but obviously information controlling the narrative is important during conflict, which we have to admit the United States has been playing a very active role in, especially when it comes to sending a lot of weaponry aid and support towards Ukraine. For me personally, it's it's a little bit weird seeing people literally comment on Justin Bieber's wardrobe and Ukraine at the same time. This, as even the Associated Press had a very interesting article that was titled Secret Intelligence Has unusually public role in Ukraine war where they describe specifically how spies came in from the cold and took center stage of this conflict as the Associated Press documented the unusual alleged transparency and involvement of the intelligence agencies and their assessments when it comes to the information that they have been releasing to the general public about quote what's allegedly happening on the battlefield and what allegedly is happening inside of the Kremlin. Usually during a time of war you don't want to declassify a large number of, of documents and assessments but the intelligence agencies are, are doing it in, in record numbers and some people are of course questioning this intelligence assessment as of course the intelligence agencies don't always have the best track record of being honest and whether it's baby incubators from Iraq or WMDs almost a decade later or human rights in Libya or Syria I think it's important to understand that there is a long history of deception being used here which of course throughout history during war has always been implemented and whether it's the Russians or the Ukrainians wherever you're getting your information it's important to of course question it since as we've been telling you the first casualty of war is truth now when it comes to this larger west versus east proxy conflict that's unfolding right now in Ukraine one of the larger talking points from the United States from Ukraine was that there were specific war crimes committed in the town of Bukha, which of course is near Kiev, with the President of the United States recently coming out and saying what happened in Bukha is, quote, outrageous, as Biden is now calling for the Russian president to, quote, face war crimes trials, and he is demanding more sanctions on the Russians, allegedly because of their crimes committed in that town. Now, there has been a lot of disturbing videos that we will not be showing or playing here on this broadcast coming from that town. Now, the president of Ukraine has been actively talking about his accounts and versions of events of allegedly what happened there. He has officially toured the area. There's been a lot of photos and videos circling social media. There's a very specific allegation of a mass grave with the bodies of allegedly 57 civilians that were uncovered at the grounds of a church inside of the city center. And I say allegedly because even the U.S. Pentagon, according to their sources, released an official statement through the Washington Post saying that they could, quote, not independently confirm that atrocities were committed by Russian forces inside of Bukha. And then, of course, you have the Russian version of events as Russian state government officials on state run television say that this is some kind of provocation plotted by Britain with the Russian defense minister coming out rejecting these allegations and claiming that, quote, not a 
single civilian suffered from violence when the town was controlled by the Russian armed forces. The Russian ambassador to the United States said that Russian troops left Bukha on March 30th. The Russians also are stating that they allegedly gave out 452 tons of humanitarian aid for civilians, and the Russians are claiming and alleging that the Ukrainian armed forces shelled the town of Bukha right after the Russian troops have left that area. And according to the Russians, this is what has caused these civilian casualties. And who's telling the truth here? Who's lying? Well, honestly, who in the world knows? We're dealing with a, a situation that has a lot of fog of war, that has a lot of propaganda, a lot of disinformation. The fact is that the Ukrainian people are paying the ultimate price for a lot of this nonsense. The fact is that the Russians did start this war. The United States looks like it's looking into prolonging it. And personally, I wish there was a way just to de-escalate this situation to prevent the further life loss of innocent human beings who are just trying to live their lives inside of their own country, inside of their own homes, inside of Ukraine. And sadly, I don't think that's going to be happening. I do see further escalations as, of course, Finland, a country very close to Russia, will be deciding whether it will be jo joining NATO or not. Russia has, of course, threatened retaliation if they do so. And the consequences of this conflict aren't only being felt by the Ukrainian people, but by some of the poorest people in this world that, of course, are going to have to deal with the global financial disruptions caused by this conflict as food prices are going to soar. Ukrainian wheat, Russian fertilizer, all disrupted supply chains with even mainline banking institutions like Goldman Sachs and Jamie Dimon coming out saying that the future predictions of the financial outlook are not bright at all with even Goldman Sachs claiming that the dollar is at risk of losing its dominance. And that's a big possibility. It's something that we've been talking about for a very long time. But I would also say that with the current situation unfolding in China, things are going to get even worse financially. I'm going to be talking about that specifically on LukeUncensored.com with the latest developments and insider information that I'm getting from that country. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to, to blow smoke up your, you know what? Things don't look good and they're only going to get worse from here. That's my assessment of it. If you think I was wrong in any way, shape, or form, let me know why in the comment section below. I think it's always important to, to tell people the truth, to tell people the honest perspectives, to share the news that, that's not always popular. We're dealing with a lot of crazy people in power that love and want more war. That's a situation that's absolutely absurd to me. And if it is for you too, share this video with your friends and family members so they could get a better perspective on what's going on. I got one more video coming your way on LukeUncensored.com. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. And this is why I love you guys. Stay tuned for a lot more here on WeAreChange.org.